back to using food as a reinforcer, how do we pair it with something else um, so that food isn't the thing that is the reinforcer forever? So obviously, um, you know, one of the things that probably isn't a reinforcer a lot of times is um, attention. Yeah. You know, praise and high fives and those kind of things. At least in the beginning. Yeah. So that what we do. get it done. So what we do is we always um, pair anytime we deliver any sort of food with you know, enthusiastically sounding praise. Okay. And we might do high fives and tickles and other things as well, pair it over and over and over with food, and eventually those things come to function as reinforcers. Yeah. It's, that's kind of a cool magic trick. It is very cool. Um, and then also we'll do the same thing with, um, you know, you could put food with anything, like um, maybe if there's a new toy, Hopefully, you would pick toys that the child's already into, but I have had some kids where their parents are like, he won't play with anything, like he is not interested in any toys. So we'll pair the food even with different toys and stuff like that, and that gets their interest to even like pay attention to the toy and try to play with it, and then maybe eventually the toy itself um, can become reinforcing in and yeah. of itself, or we, you know, through the pairing process, that can happen. So, um, but, you know, once that you've got these other things that are interesting now to the child, they don't really need the food anymore. Yeah. A lot of times we just stop doing the food, we don't need it. Right. Other times we might do food only for difficult lessons where nothing else is reinforcing enough to get yeah. them to want to do that lesson, but it's an important thing they need to work on or something. Or we might do differential reinforcement where we, um, if it's, a, it might not even be that they don't like the lesson, but what they're learning is very hard for them. Uh huh and to really get their attention and to make sure that they're focused, um, we might use the food um, and then provide that for the difficult response and then do a couple of easier things where we're now we're giving some toys or praise or whatever and then come back to the difficult one. So where maybe like food is kind of more intermittently involved with the reinforcement okay. schedule so that it's not constant. So it's not necessarily the be all I think end some all. Uh, families think that like their f kids are consuming ridiculous amounts of food and stuff like that throughout yeah. sessions and it isn't that way because um, it's one little bite or whatever, you know, contingent on correct responding. We would do it quicker and maybe bigger bites if it was an actual meal because we wouldn't want to withhold them from being able to eat their meal at a regular pace. Right. So if, if I was going to be doing this with a meal and I know this kid eats pretty slow or maybe they're not going to, um, we don't get through enough material fast enough, like normally someone would eat a meal maybe within 30 minutes, I need to make sure that they can still eat that within 30 minutes so I yeah. might do bigger bites or something like that, you know. And I, and I think it's so worthwhile for people to hear this, though, Dr. Nadowski, about, because, you know, we had somebody who wrote in last week and said, I'm so stressed at night because my son goes to school and then he comes home and he has therapy and then therapy is over and we're trying to get dinner on the table. We don't sit at the table anymore because the, ther the therapist is sitting there doing, you know, their graphs and then we have to do homework and then it's bedtime and I feel like my family is falling apart. And I had said, and, and another viewer wrote in and said, uh, that they agreed with me too, you know, incorporate your therapy into your life. That, you know, you can have therapy going on while dinner is going on. You can have homework going on in, in conjunction with therapy. That all of these things, you know, I think a lot of times parents think, I need to keep therapy separate from our day to day. Yeah. And, and I want to be the voice saying, no, it should be a part yeah. of everything. Because